Hello, my name is Chinny and over the next few minutes I'm going to give you a brief glimpse of some of the capabilities of Softimage 3D. Softimage 3D is divided into five modules, the modelling section, the motion for your keyframing, actor is your inverse kinematics and skin, the matter module for texturing materials and rendering, and your tools for import and export as well as making AVIs. We'll start in the model module and do some traditional polygon modelling. Going full screen here, I'm going to take this cube and we can change its dimensions very quickly and then take the object and subdivide it. Currently in object mode, we're now going to go into polygon mode. Freeze the scaling and now by ray casting I can select any polygon I wish. I can then duplicate this over itself by repetitive action. With the last polygon still selected, we can scale this up, move it around, and now if I duplicate one polygon over another, we can start to see how the flexibility of Softimage 3D allows us to do very quick and intuitive modeling. Going to do several polygons at the same time in the setup mode. I can make them act as individuals. So now if I duplicate one over the other and scale them down, I now have six at once. Move these out, move them up, and we're almost ready. Using the last repetition, I can change some of the numbers to get a more well, interesting look. There we go. Now to do the other side, I can pick these, but because it's going to go in the other direction, I just want a different rotation, and they're basically a negative. Kabling. To continue, again it will remember the last numbers I typed in. Let's just select this last one here. Let's scale it down. Because each polygon has its own center, it can work on its own independent axis. Can you tell what it is yet? Now if I select a multiple number of polygons, again, I can have them act as one. So if I go back into the duplicate by repetition, I can do a multiple polygons. Again, showing you the speed of soft image. Let's get a bit more organic feel to this. So select these ones. Scale them down a bit. Again, it gives a better feel towards the final result. Even though it's a bit blocky at the moment, we can now do some rounding on this to give it a more organic feel. Now I want to put some inverse kinematics and some skin. So, entering the bones, and up here you can see I'm just going to move it slightly so that it's roughly in the place I want over the leg. If I now duplicate that, I can move these around. I currently have three legs selected. I can then do some symmetry on this. And finally, and see how I can put these into a hierarchy. To actually finally do the skinning, go back into the actor module, go to skin, make an envelope, and it's done. As you can see now, when I move one of the legs, it deforms the object. But I can specify exactly the area I wish it to deform, because everything is color-coded, and I can see very easily which areas I want to deform and which areas I want to take out. In this case, it's just want the legs to be deforming. Go to here, reassign them, 
done. So now when I select my leg again, I can see that Let's take these. There we go. And now it's just going to deform the leg. So we've put the skin on this, but now we need to be able to animate it. We go into the motion section. This is where we can set our keyframes and set up a very quick and yet simple piece of animation. One one more time in the model module, I'm going to draw a path for the scorpion to walk down. And now I'm ready to set the animation. A feature in Software 3D called Multiped allows us to animate any character with any number of legs. So, first of all, go into the Multiped menu. Select OK, and it tells me what to do. At the bottom it says pick the floor, then the path, then the body, which is the top of the hierarchy, and now I can pick the feet. And we're ready. Let's move the path up slightly, and we can now see how this has worked. Again, it's doing all the calculations for me extraordinarily quickly, but it still allows us to access those elements are called function curves. And this is a 2D graphical representation of any piece of animation. If I go into the function curves, we can now start playing around. If you look at, say, the spread of the legs, I can move these in and out, the offset, the spacing, and we can do some fine tuning. Now, if I want to put some texture on here in this polygon model. I go into the matter module and apply a texture. Go and select one. Currently it is in polygon mode and it's just being projected on. If we convert it to a UV map we can now adjust the handles to readjust where it's taking its information from. In this case I want to do to use almost the entire texture. If we have a look now, there it is. Very quickly, I can copy this and then paste it on the rest. So now I've converted it to a UV map. It's allowed me to very easily texture my scorpion. One last thing I want to do is add a constraint so that when my camera will always follow my object. So I'll constrain my camera's position to my object and therefore I can now be assured it will always be in the right place. Ten minutes ago that was a cube and this will give you some idea as to the flexibility, the power and the speed of Soft Image 3D. And now we're going to have a look at some of the third-party plugin tools from Conscious, Python and Phoenix. First of all, I'm going to start by drawing an outline. And revolving it. With relational modeling, we can still add some more points. Or we can change any part of the profile with relational modeling, I can still change some of the parameters until I'm happy. Yeah, it's about it. Once you're happy with your model, we can then go do some very quick animation. If we go into the motion module, we can now link our object to my mouse in a type of motion capture. Whenever my mouse moves in X or Y, I want my object to do the same. And we've connected. Now I'm ready to do some capturing. I now have it linked to my mouse. Down here, I'm ready to record. Mm -hmm. 
play this back, we've now put some animation very quickly, but where Soft Image has a great deal of power is being able to give it a bit of character without too many problems. Again, if we now play it back, you can see it has a more cartoony character type feel. Again, we can go now, add the final touch with a bit of texture, make it UV mapped, and have final look at our animation. Again, this should give you an idea of the speed and the flexibility of Soft Image 3D. We're now going to be looking at a tool from Conscious called Grabber. Or a very simple animation. And what we want to do is apply a local deformation parameter, in this case to the hands. If we go into Deformation Grabber, we can apply the amount of power and also the damping or fall off to the actual deformation itself. This area then I can scale, which will define the bounding area of the deformation. If I move this, again I can specify exactly what I'd like. When I'm happy, I think, OK, that's fine. I can clamp it into place. This means that this area now has a local deformation and it's will not move. I could therefore pick this up and animate the movement, but I can also animate all the power of the actual effect itself. If we see here, just apply it, just put it down a bit. There we go. So now we can go through and start keyframing. If we want to release the power, we can go into the function curve, into here, or we can go into the custom effect itself and apply the keyframes. If we apply the power at 100%, if we go to a later frame and key that at zero, we've turned it off. This allows us then to very simply to do a local deformation. We also have the function curve, which we can make linear. It will therefore be a constant ratio. Grabber from Conscious. We're now going to look at a tool called Sweeper from Python. This allows us to take any type of curve at all with any number of points and interactively skin them together and define again any type of surface you require. In this case we have a B-spline patch, we can make it a polygonal surface and interactively we can also change the level of detail. This allows us the flexibility of defining the object before we actually finally have to commit ourselves. Once this is done, we still have the full relational modeling that you'd expect in Softimage 3D. Interactive skinning from Python. We're now going to look at a cloth simulator from Phoenix Tools. Within the actor module, we go to our dynamics, and this is the cloth simulator, defining the parameters, the mass, stiffness. You can apply gravity, wind, obstacle collision. In this case, I can select the sails, and automatically we can apply a dynamic simulation. While I play this back, it will also be calculating the dynamics as we go along. It understands the movement of the object as well as the gravity and again any wind variable 
it may encounter. The cloth can be a patch or a nerves. And as you can see, it has extraordinary results very quickly. This is cloth from Phoenix Tools.